This is what you should be making your friends. Vegan or otherwise, vegan or otherwise, for anybody this fall, autumn, holiday season. It's mushroom with sage. It's kind of like a salt and buka. It's super flavorful, super savory, crispy, crunchy with a coffee pot gravy that I made. It's fantastic. I'm going to show you how to make the single guy coffee pot gravy when you don't have a gravy boat. This recipe will serve two to three people. We're gonna start off with the mashed potatoes, so I'm gonna peel and chop into large chunks, sweet potatoes and one potato just for consistency because the sweet potatoes are much more watery and less starchy than regular white potatoes. And we're gonna add those to a pot of water with a little bit of salt in it and bring it to a boil to cook the potatoes for the mashed. Next, we're gonna make some ninja nuts. At least that's what I like to call them. Roast off some pecans, 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 with a little bit of cayenne, some salt, and agave. A little bit of agave, cayenne pepper, salt. Once the pecans are all seasoned up, we're just gonna pop them in the oven. Now we're gonna to wanna to keep an eye on these. I set the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, that's 400 degrees Fahrenheit for my US friends on fan or convection. And I don't want them to burn. So I'm gonna check them every couple minutes. They should only take like 10, 15 minutes. Today we're gonna to be using four portobello mushrooms. I wanna keep them mostly intact, but what I'm gonna do is make a base. So I'm just gonna cut down so it looks flat. I'm gonna save the scraps. The onion, I'm just gonna take the skin off. And then every time I stir it, it all gets stuck on my tongue, so I gotta clean them. And you can tell they're done by the toasty look on them. Potatoes are done. You can tell they're done when they're fork tender and they break apart. And save that liquid, we'll use it. Big vegan butter, please. Like two tablespoons. So I'm gonna use some fresh thyme. Pinch of pepper. The mushrooms, we're gonna boil them. Same liquid, we boil the potatoes. Gonna bring this to a boil and let it go for about three to five minutes. For the onion rounds, we're just gonna heat up a cast iron skillet, a little bit of butter, and brown each side for about two minutes to get some color on there and some added flavor. For the gravy, this is the water. We boiled the potatoes and the mushrooms in. I'm just gonna save that. Five shallots. While the shallots are sauteing on the side, we're gonna make the cornstarch and water slurry. Time, rosemary. And we're still using that nutrient packed broth. And I'm adding a teaspoon of bouillon, which is optional. So these are good as a snack for the table. I like to use half of the nuts for a snack or on salads, and then we're gonna chop up the rest of them for the main dish. Delicious. Okay, the gravy's boiling. So here I'm gonna watch it and see how thick it gets. If it needs to be thicker, then I'm gonna add a little bit more cornstarch and water, and we'll see in one second. So to make the gravy brown, I'm using this. This is like a browning sauce, see? Browning. And I'm only gonna add about a capful. Once the gravy's done, I like to strain it through a fine strainer and then set it aside. Portobello's, I boil them for the texture and so they don't get oil logged when I wanna fry them. I'm gonna use a little bit of cornstarch and rice flour. I have some fresh sage here. Sifted together in a mixing bowl and heat up a little bit of oil in the cast iron skillet. 
We're gonna paint the portobello mushroom with a little bit of the gravy, or you can use regular liquid, and we're gonna adhere or stick the sage leaf onto the top of it, and then coat it with the cornstarch and fry them to crisp them. And it worked perfectly. While I was at it, I fried off a couple of the fresh sage leaves as well, just for that extra crisp and some garnish. All that excess oil that I don't want to throw away, I want to reuse it, so I just take an extra strainer, make sure it's dry, take the towels. Then I just let this sit for a while. Ah, oh, Frankie's back. <laughs> now there's several ways to plate this. I'm gonna do one for myself right now and then another in a casserole dish for a more of a family style setting. This smells delicious. And yes, I would serve it with a little bit more vegetables, but I'd plan to have that on the side the rest of the meal, it looks fantastic. For the family style, the casserole dish, I'm just adding all the mashed potatoes in. I like to oil the bottom first, just for easy cleanup for me being OCD. And then the coffee pop gravy, I'm just adding that hot gravy to a coffee pot on the burner. Super easy, simple tip. It's the little things that excite me. Almost everybody's got a coffee pot. Cause I don't have a gravy though. But I do have a coffee pot. It's easy, it keeps it warm, it frees up space from the oven on uh, a stove top. And this is delicious. Mm -hmm. For the candy pecans, the ninja nuts, I would add these after they come out of the oven. Maybe even put them on the side. Some people are allergic to nuts. So you got the whole ones for snacks. Great beer snacks or soda. 